Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where I talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to I'm gonna talk about Carnival Row, Season 2, Episode 7. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, we're picking up with the New Dawn situation. Obviously, Agraeus and... Uh, Imogen are trying to find their opportunity to escape. They're slip. They're like playing along, like ah, dancing. Like they're all feeling this. They're 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 in the vibe and stuff. And then they're going to use this opportunity to slip away with Ezra. You know, which make he just seems so pitiful. He's like, oh, what should I do about my beer? And of course, it's almost just like oh, you idiot. Just put it down. We'll be back for it later. You idiot. Like when I say come on, just shut up and follow my lead. It's like oh, you're such a. You know, he kind of gives off that vibe in that moment. But yeah, it would have been an issue to bring because it's like right. There's already three of them escaping, including the the guy that used to work for Grace. Now it's like now you're adding a fourth person as including Ezra. But it's like right, we'll make this work. Problem is, in that moment, the pack decided to attack, and it's like they had to arm up and get ready for this fight because everyone has to join in this fight because it's like right if we don't. The, if the pack does win, we're all dead because, like, right, we were, we were, we were instigators, we were uh, usurpers, so of course we're all gonna die. But also, like, they'd have no love loss for like Imogen and Agraeus' situation, so you kind of have to fight. Yeah, I mean, if and if you don't fight, that's gonna be even more of an issue. So it is fascinating because we don't really know fully how the the New Dawn is able to kind of handle things the way they did because apparently that's that situation. Uh, at the beginning of the episode, it's what sparks the trickle effect of later parts of the episode. So, yes, it is kind of all in its own, the Agraeus and Imogen thing, but it's tied up into a plot thing that has world-reaching effects because it reaches all the way into the Berg, has an effect on the Berg because because of the New Dawn giving them such a big fight that they're still, even with, like, uh, I, I, I would assume they've, maybe they, at this point in time, they don't have the Burgess weapons. I mean, that's why they decided to work with the Berg anyway, first place, because it's like, right, we need your weapons. We've seen firsthand what the Berg's weapons can do, especially the rifles at long range. So they must still not have gotten the weapons yet for them to be in it. I guess it's like, or maybe they did, but it's like, the New Dawn is still putting a, such pressure on them that they had to pull all their forces out of Tiernanok that they had to go fight the pact. So I guess that was their plan. And it's like, right, with that being the case, Tiernanok's free. So now we're picking up with things in the Berg where Philo has escaped from uh, bleakness. But the problem is, like, obviously, like, everything is heated. All the humans are just like, oh, yeah, like, down with the critch and stuff like that. We even saw it... Uh, Jonah's funeral, whatever, that the pastor was, the priest was talking about the fact is that, oh, the Fae, like, uh, the martyr, uh, brought down the Fae, and he, like, basically, he doesn't smile upon them. You know, the typical thing in our world, obviously, God loves all his children type of thing. It's, and this is like, oh, the, the Fae are kind of, I guess, once again, as humans put it, like, abomination. So, in a religious text, it's saying that too, like, oh, they are lesser than. I'm sure the real thing applied in real life too. I'm sure, I've never heard of that, but I'm sure it existed where, like, people would probably use the Bible as saying, like, oh, yeah, like, uh, oh, when God was talking about that, God was talking about white people, maybe. And, it, you know, so I'm sure, like, there's an even deeper parallel with that. I feel like I don't remember hearing the racist side of religion back in the day. I mean, when the whole world, like, the whole circumstance kind of leans into racism, I'm not, I'm, I'm, you know... When the world was like that at the time, I'm not going to just put that solely on religion. I'm just saying, like, I'm sure, like, during a very racist era that, like, religion was used to kind of put people down just like it is in this regard. But it's like, oh, God, the martyr is going to take pity on these pitiable creatures, you know, type of thing. So, nevertheless, so that was, that's kind of like what I was kind of like the warp, like everything's like really heated at this time, but at least the, the row in, in particular, the picks, but the entire row, it's, I think it's kind of symbolic of because what Tiernanok represented. And it's like, right. Tiernanok being free, let's all celebrate. Vignette's still trying to find a way out for her and, um, Tourmaline. But the problem is she goes, goes to boss, but he's like, yeah, there's a bigger price on your head. Plus you and your black Ravens folk 
cause me a lot of issues. You cause me a lot of money. And if you don't have the Black Ravens backing, I can go after you. But it's like, no, like, vignette's not going to, like, let you, like, catch her off slipping like that. So, but that kind of limited their options. Because, like, yeah, even if they can probably find other people, if Boz is going to react like that, who's to say anyone else they try to turn to? I mean, you're also going to be, you're dealing with shady people, and shady people are going to do shady things. So, there's no one else you can really turn to in this situation. Obviously, Vignette wasn't initially aware that Philo was returned to the um, to the row. It is interesting that um, that conversation he had with Dombey, where it's like Dombey's like, right, if it wasn't for you, the fact of the matter is, I would have been killed in front of my family because of those picks. So at the end of the day, I will trust you. So trust us type of situation, because it's like, right, regardless of my beef with you, even he's like, that That does speak volume. I think that's interesting, where he's like, even I don't want the road to burn, which is so interesting, you have never hidden how much you hate Faye, so the fact is, you're just kind of like, I don't want the road to burn, because I think for him, it's like, that's too much chaos, it's like, yeah, segregation is fine, but like, I'm not on the whole, like, because he knows what kind of a terrible, he knows it's going to be a bloody situation regardless. That's more so it like, yeah, people are going to die on both sides. So he'd rather keep the row from burning because if the row burns, the burger's going to burn too, because like, it's just going to be a bloodbath type of situation. So I guess maybe that's his thought, you know, trying to be moderate, even though he's never been a moderate person. Um, either way, when Philo does return to the row, obviously after everything in bleakness, he's not the same. He's Kind of his spirits have been broken because last episode he did a lot of reflecting on his past, especially with Asparis popping up, considering what him and the others did in the army to the Asparises. And now on top of just his split between, you know, the warring sides of his human side and his space side, and especially because his disgusting himself or like leaning into his human side rather than kind of never giving his face side a chance like that's why like he he's pushing he doesn't want to see vignette he's pushing darius away he let those like he was handling his own defending himself obviously he was getting himself pissed drunk because he's trying to drown his sorrows but he was easily handling those guys that jumped him but he was just like no go ahead do it finish y'all because he wanted to be beat up he wanted he wanted to punish himself luckily darius was there to kind of like smack some sense into him but, but for Philo, it's like my entire life was a lie. Like, I worked with the cops. I put away Faye. But for Darius, it's like, you put away criminals. She, like, just like Faye, like, humans are capable of being scumbags, so can Faye. It's like, you put away scumbags. Scumbags are scumbags no matter what race they are. But for him, it's like, yeah, but it doesn't change the fact is I was still all doing that being what I was too. And now he feels like he did so much harm, more harm than good. It's like my entire life was a lie. Like maybe if I hadn't hidden myself, maybe I could have done more instead. I just, you know, I thought I was kind of doing, you know, because for him, it's like he thought by putting away bad guys, it could kind of make up for like the life of lies that he's lived, um, hiding himself and thought he could do like put more good in the world, you know. Uh, but Darius is like, right, you know, this isn't my friend talking. He's like, the fact is, you want to say your entire life is a lie. You did do good as the position you were. Yeah, like cops suck, but I know who you are as a person. I know your heart, Violet. I know who you are. And he leaves Vignette there to try and talk some sense into him. But it's like, they're so divided where they stand. It's like, how do we even get her? It's like, I don't know. And it's like... For Philo, he's like, maybe if I had kind of given my face side a chance, if I had probably more so embraced it rather than hiding in, you know, the human world, then maybe, maybe you and me might have had more of a chance. But Vignette's got to leave with Tourmaline. It's like, I got to get her out of here because of her vision to make spare her life and save her from the sparrows that's going to kill her. It's like, well, if I don't uh, do that, then, um, you know, I, I, I got to do this for her. So, obviously, Philo understands, and that was kind of what he needed, the kick in the butt. Because, yes, he never really fully, fully planned to cooperate with the humans. That was just his way to get out of bleakness. Obviously, it's that, like, like figurative like version of himself was telling him last episode. But I don't think what he had planned is fully, fully what he had planned. I, I don't know. But either way, he tracks down Millworthy, and it's like, okay, the fact of the matter is, the Burke hates the uh, Faye. Well, because it's like, right, Parliament will never, like, fully, like, even the smallest thing, like, Millworthy is like, I can never, they will never agree on anything. It's like, well, they all hate Faye, right? Well, Ternanox free, ship them all back. It's like, it's a win-win. The Faye get to go home, and Parliament seem like, oh, 
all these people are so happy. Hey, the Fae are gone. We get something. We get people riled. Like, people won't be as riled up. And the Fae are gone. So that kind of gets rid of us. Now, in the long run, what that means, I don't know. Considering, like... Well, now that Sophie's dead, I don't know where that whole thing stands. And especially because they're without a, a full official chancellor. Because nowhere there's like, yeah, I'm kind of the neutral party kind of holding everything together for now. But it's like, let's not forget, Faye make up a lot of their main workforce. Which I'm sure that obviously turns into that issue of like humans being out of jobs because Faye's are doing it for piss poor pay. I think that was kind of like a thing this season. But I think it was even more so of a, a thing last season, really, you know. That just argument ends up kind of, obviously, once again, paralleling real life in that regard. But w what ends up happening, um, what would happen because if they make up such a large, like, workforce that I'm curious what would happen with, like, such a max exodus? I mean... Obviously, by the end of the episode, we know that's a moot point. But at the time, I'm so curious like what that would have really meant. A lot of people kind of gave into their hate. Maybe the lower rank, like average people probably, I mean, don't really care because it's like, hey, more jobs for us. So it's just uh, you go back to like a human workforce. And I guess it's just it's a win, win, win across the board for everyone in that regard. So they were able to kind of make it happen. And it's like, wow, like the humans aren't letting them go out of the kindness of the heart. Even Philo put it simply like, yeah. They want us to go. We want to go. And then it's like, like, we? And it's like, are you going? And he's like, no, I'm not. I, I got to stay here. Kind of feels like there is no place for him in tear not. But it's like getting Vignette and Tomaline out. It's what matters the most. Obviously, you know. Obviously, the main thing is like he did all this because he wants to help Vignette. But it's like, yeah, I'm also helping all. In his way, it's also making up for all the fay he kind of let down in the past. So. Um, I think it was interesting too that Tourmaline was like, right, go after him if you want. She's like, no, I want to, like, I got stay by your side. But it's like, you're, we're picks. You have room in your heart for other people. Cause like, they hadn't really brought that up until like the Kane situation, like the him and Ono. Once again, there was like three other people involved in their situation. I was like, oh, I, I think the terminology, I always get confused on what the term is, but I think it's polyamorous. So I was like, oh, picks are, are polyamorous in that regard. Like, they have more than one part. It's like, yeah, you can love more than, um, maybe kind of like polyamorous and very pansexual in that regard of like, oh, we can just like love any and everyone. So we're not limited to just, you know, and I think Tormeline's kind of been like, yeah, like you're allowed to like have, because I know you have room in your heart for both me and Philo, you know, so. And part of me wonders, does that mean she's kind of got room in her heart for Darius? Like, who knows what that is? Whether that is just purely a friendship, whether it potentially could be more, I don't know. But because Darius isn't going. It's like, yeah, he could go. It would make sense for him to go, considering he's a Merrick. But it's like, yeah, because of what I am. It, 200 people on the ship, the only thing getting off that ship is Merrick. It's like, well, you will get there before a full moon. And as long as you don't get hit with anything sharp, you're fine. But for him, it's like, no. Regardless of how terrible it is, the Berg is my home. It's all he's ever known. So he wants to stay here and, you know, I guess maybe fight for it, but more so just like be here. You know, it's like there is no place for him because, you know, that was a whole conversation him and Philo had before and in this episode where it's like, yeah, there's no place for people like us. We don't fit in with the humans. We're not quite in the same lane as the Fae. We're in this complicated in between, but at the very least Philo doesn't have to go that alone. And so there's that, that benefit. So I did think it was kind of neat having Afisa and Vignette had that conversation where, like, you know, it's like, oh, like, Afisa kind of was like, yeah, when we're taking care of the six so much that she's like, I kind of wanted to hope that I would catch the Pix disease just so I could be kind of done with it all. But Vignette's talking about, the, like, the good that she's done. It's like, hey, look at, like, you took care of me. You looked after me when I first got here. But for Afisa, it's like, no, I didn't. I said some very mean things to you because she's like, for her, it's like, I grew up in the bird because she's like, she was going to... It's like, oh, you can, you're going to enjoy 10 or not. But it's like, yeah, but, it, you know, a lot of the other puck were talking about going back home. But for her, it's like the Berg is all she's known. She she was raised here. And for her, like, kind of no other place. She's known no other place, um, even like the puck homeland. And for her, it's a situation of she grew up saying, believing like, right, you bow your heads, you, you answer to your betters. And she apologizes to the way she treated Vignette because she's like, no, it's not okay. It's not in the bad for her. It's like, 
I people can do better. She's like, I can do better. So, and I think that's that plus hearing her say like, yeah, well, whoever was responsible for him, you give him a kiss for me. I think it made her kind of realize even more so like I should talk to Philo because it's like, right, him doing all this, trying to, he's end up, he's helping so many other people. The fact is that, um, the fact, despite everything, despite his complications, despite everything, like he is trying to do better, trying to be better. So. You also have Tourmaline visiting the Mima saying like, hey, I need to leave this with you because like I don't need this anymore. Like, hey, we're leaving. So obviously the site isn't always correct. And the Mima's like, yeah, perhaps. And it's like, that's the sad thing about fate. I mean, we saw it with Samani, like no matter what, what she saw ended up coming true. So I guess that kind of, you know, showcases like, yeah, the, the site is always right. Maybe you won't always get the full picture necessarily. So we'll have to wait and see what ends up happening. I hope that doesn't end up being a case. I mean, cause once again, from the vision, we saw like the Sparex there, but I don't think we saw it kill Tourmaline. But maybe it's because Tourmaline ends up like, kind of very much like Samani ends up figuring out, you know, she ended up finding out about uh, Piety. So it's like maybe the same thing is kind of happening in this regard where Tourmaline ends up discovering the real person behind all this. And maybe that's what kind of influences um, her being under attack type of thing. We'll ultimately have to wait and see on that front. But um, since I brought it up before, uh, F Vignette does talk to Philo this time. And obviously he has his reservations about going, but she's like, right, we can go. Like you, you could start over. Maybe it's with me, maybe it's not. But the fact of the matter is, especially considering like he, like last season, the conversation of all he ever dreamed about was kind of going back to Tiernanok. And now it's like, it's, it's a reality now. So take this opportunity and he decides to go with them. Obviously the humans are sitting around like the, the herd of like, you know, uh, Faye leaving the row throwing stuff at them, attacking them. But it's like, right, we'll take whatever you want to dish out, say whatever you want to, we're leaving, you get what we you want, we get what we want. And uh, just when they are about to, uh, you know, this this is about to be the end of it, uh, Barrick shows up and he's like, right, this was, you never intended to help us. He did. And he's like, no, the fact is I'm going with the fact, cause he, he talks about kind of the ugliness of the human side of things, which Barrick says like, I get it. I know how the lads are like, but you, you are a fine example of what it means to be a cop. Like he was like, because of men like you and because of my dad, you're the reason why I was happy to put on the uniform. Cause I would, there are de there, there might be a lot of bad apples amongst him, but we are decent human beings. We, you know, and you were a reminder of that every day. Like Barrick looked up the Philo he was always the one that was very like yeah he felt betrayed by Philo but it's still like you are the best you are the best of us so it's like but for Philo it's just like he's like I didn't leave the badge behind the badge was stripped from me so but for him it's like maybe it was it was a blessing in disguise I, I for now he finally kind of it gets to embrace more so the face side of him gets to start over he does and also he gets to start over and not have to hide who he is and gets to embrace who he is but before that could even go down, the Black Raven show up. I'm like, you're, why are you doing this? I'm like, it's so counterproductive to like, I guess maybe it's like, right, no, 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 no. We're going to like, do they not trust what the, because uh, it's like, you know, they have had to have hurt word considering all, all the mass exodus of the Fae. And it's like, you choose now to do this. They, you know, sadly, uh, Vignette wasn't there to probably rein them in. They kind of just did their own thing, especially like, I'm sure Kane's the one leading them and he's got his hate filled thing of like, no, 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 screw the human. Like you were screwing over so many Fae, but for him, them, maybe it's like a, no, we're using this opportunity opportunity we're going to strike back at the humans it's like but you're destroying everything and then ultimately we see the spirit shows up too and it's working alongside them i'm like i guess it's like what it's doing is like oh we're, what we're doing is for the greater good of the fae but i'm also like but why would you like you're maybe it's a thing of like sacrifices have to be made for the greater good or maybe they're just so wrapped up in a revenge or maybe the spirits kind of has like a little bit of a siren call and it has them under its control or because I'm like, why would you do this? Like these are some of your people too. you're throwing under the bus. But once again, maybe they think it's for the greater good of like we have to strike, you know, because the spirits has been just like Barrick said, been sparking stuff between the humans and the Fae. And now the Black Ravens are doing that working alongside of it doing that too because the Sparrow has been working along until, alone until now and now it's like working with the Black Ravens because uh Kane was there with Barracks and then like he left and let the Sparrow handle him 
which is sad that, you know, especially because I think for Philo, it probably hit even more now what Barracks is last, especially because they replayed it in the opening um, about Barracks singing that same thing. I'm like, yeah, like it seems like this thing is playing humans and Faye against each other. Once again, for what purpose? I don't know. I mean, this thing might have it out. I mean, because the whole point has been about saving Faye. And in this particular regard, it doesn't kill any Faye. It goes around killing every human like speci specifically obviously the main humans that are there are the cops so and obviously it, it constantly it it didn't go after well i mean it got barracks and so it bounced afterwards so like would it go after philo probably not because that sparrix like all seven years ago spared him because it can smell that he was part picks so i don't i don't know it's, I'm trying to understand why they would do that. Because I, because we also have to think about, too, are we going to find out the Sparrow? It has to have been someone that we've seen throughout the season, but it's like, well, we saw some pretty key characters. So I mean, obviously, it's like, well, it can't be pretending to be Vignette because we saw Vignette. It can't be Kane or whatever because we saw Kane. So it's not Tourmaline. Could it, I don't think it... I feel like it has to be... I, I don't know. Part of me was wondering, could it be Millworthy? Like the fact, well, because they saw it fly away when Millworthy was in the corner. So, like, I don't think it's him. Not unless it found him, killed him, and replaced him type of situation. Because that's like, I don't know who else it could be. Not like, not unless it's like Dombey or something like that in disguise. Because he's like the only person I can definitely see. I'm like, who else could it be? You know, what other form? I mean, it has to take on some particular form for it to, like, kick it with the Black Ravens like that, so. Like I said, not unless it has some, like, siren ability or something. I have no idea what to fully make of that. I'll have to wait to see where Episode 8 ends up taking us going forward with all of this. But, uh, really, that's all I wanted to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.